Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has felicitated with Nigerian youth on International Youth Day. As part of his statement to commemorate the 2020 International Youth Day, he reiterated his support for Nigerian youth, emphasizing their commitment and perseverance towards the attainment of a greater Nigeria. Atiku noted the need for the engagement and participation of young people in the socio-economic survival of the world and its rejuvenation post-COVID. The former vice president added that he will continue to offer his shoulders for the youth to climb. And joining us from Abuja is Aneka Enya Etok, policy analyst, while Chude Achike, social commentator, joins us here in Lagos. Thank you for joining us. So before we come to the former president's, uh, uh, vice president's comments, let's begin by asking Mr. Inya Etok, what is your assessment of the Nigerian youth in their quest for success and uh, adding value in Nigeria? Um, well, thank you very much for having me on and for the question. I think um, the Nigerian youth of today is in a precarious position. Um, he or she finds himself or herself in a place where there is an abundance of creativity and talent, but not necessarily, um, and I'm sorry to have to say what we say all the time, not necessarily an enabling environment and not necessarily a vision uh, for the Nigerian youth that helps them succeed. This means that at best, all they have is uh, mental capacity and um, physical competence or technical competence to be able to navigate this world without necessarily having the structures to ensure that the efforts are adequately rewarded. Mm -hmm. So I think that the Nigerian youth is in a, a very interesting position today. Um, one that we all have to decide which direction we want to go and then be able to hold people accountable. But we are in a position where we, we, we need to make a decision as to which direction the country is heading towards and which direction we would like to take it towards as the next level of leadership and the future of Nigeria. Mm. And I certainly agree with you there when you talk about the creativity and resourcefulness of the Nigerian youth. But throwing it now to you, Chude, when you hear the former vice president, Atiko Abubakar, say in his words, and I quote, I shall continue to offer my shoulder uh, for you to climb. How, how does this come across to you? Well, um, yeah, if there's something, one thing we can say about uh, the vice president, at least in the past uh, a few years, maybe the last uh, 10 years, especially following this uh, well-known um, uh, intention uh, to perhaps uh, govern, to govern this country one day as a, as a president, uh, it is a fact that uh, he has um, uh, always shown ability to communicate with the youths. Now, the feedback from the youth has been completely different, thing, but I think that he has more or less com you know, communicated to the youth. And he said uh, that um, if elected the president of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that he was going to ensure that 40% uh, of his uh, cabinet, I mean, of his government is made up of youth. Now, that is a very bold uh, statement. Bold in the sense that, um, you know, he's making this statement even before he ever gets to power. And so the tendency for people to want to hold him uh, you know, on his words is exceedingly very high. I think truly, you know, in spite of every other thing, in spite of the typical traits of the Nigerian and characteristics of the Nigerian politician, that this president seems to believe so much in, you know, in the ability of the youth uh, to play a transformative and generative role, you know, in society. And I, and I cannot take that away from him. But then again, <clears throat> if we look at the travels of the youth, if we look at the situation they have found themselves in, I think one thing one must readily also ask the question. Now you want to do something for the youth if you have the opportunity, maybe as president of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But the question should be readily asked of him again is he has been in positions of authority before as vice president of Nigeria. What has he been able to do? Yes, has embraced the youth also at other levels in some of his businesses and the rest and has seen the ability. You know, the diversity that they bring into, you know, uh, efficiency of production or services and, you know, the innovation that they also bring. But ultimately, at the level of politics, and that is where you look at more, what has exactly, what has he been able to do or what can he say he was able to do using his official portfolio as vice president, you know, to, 
ensure a better life for the youth of this country. Exactly, Chude. Now, th th let, me, let me stay with you a bit on that one. Just, you know, what you said about what Atiku's been able to do, despite what he says. Now, we see that uh, he is also a businessman owning several businesses, especially in the north. And you see several of his businesses uh, going through reshuffling and restructuring in recent times, especially having lots of youth, young people being sacked from those organizations he owns. So how then can you just oppose that with his International Youth Day statement where he was promising that 40% of the youth will be in government and that uh, he was going to offer his shoulders for the youth to, to climb. How do you, how do you just oppose that, those, those uh, statements? Yeah, well, 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 the reality is that um, if his businesses are also suffering some economic downturn that has seen to the sacking of uh, maybe some of his employees, some of whom are youth, uh, we might not exactly hold that against him because nobody naturally wants his businesses to suffer. And we all know that in the post-COVID-19, I mean, the COVID-19 era, that uh, there is there, there's some social phenomena that um, have gotten the best of all of us, no matter how good we have been, whether in businesses or so. I mean, this is a phenomenon that has completely taken over, you know, the direction and the pace at which the world, you know, moves. And so we can say to some extent that perhaps that this might not be so much of his doing. And then we will not want even a situation where he has a certain number of youths in his employ. And then ultimately at the end of the day, because he says that he believes so much in the power of the youths, then he, you know, he wants to disengage staff. He does it in a discriminatory manner. People who are old, I mean, of a particular level, but disengage so that he can accommodate the youth. If we're talking about an all-inclusive, you know, uh, engagement with his people, with those who have been able to work on, under him. But let me just say this again. <clears throat> that um yeah, you, you know the the youths uh, should not just sit down and wait to be fed because when we are talking about transforming the youths in in in, in this our generation we are talking about uh, i mean there's this saying that uh, power is not given power is taken the youths must also understand one thing that they need to be able to you know that there must be a proper con con you know uh, contestation for power political power because it is only with political power that you can begin to make whatever impact you want to make in the rest of society so All rather right, than so wait let's, for, the, let's, for them to be let's go now to and, you know, yeah, take it to that Eldorado that they are all wishing for they must also realize that they have to fight to get that Eldorado and so when they are engaging with people like Atiku Abubakar and 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 all the other all the other people that matter within the political Thank you Chude your point has been sure. your point has also, been noted Chude you know uh, that I, there is proper contestation you know, for power, uh, you, you know, uh, on their own terms also, and then most, most uh, perhaps most like not, in, not on the terms of the political elites who have not exactly acted in consonance with the interests of the youth in general. I mean, allow me interject here today. Um, we have to throw it now back to Iyak Etok, who was talking about uh, just a, a few seconds ago, talking about how uh, resources for the youth are, but are, are lacking in in certain structures that should make them thrive the more in Nigeria. So, Iyak Etok, from the point of policy making, which areas should our leadership? strongly consider to give meaningful empowerment to the Nigerian youth in such a way that translates to being impactful and uh, contribute as well to national growth? Okay, so um, thank you very much for the question. I want, I want to start, first of all, by, you know, sort of taking up from where uh, my colleague has, has left it off. Um, there is a need to be able to engage on a level beyond just rhetoric and talk. All right. Mm -hmm. But that means, and to answer your question, that means that for us to be able to articulate policies and, and, and processes that are going to be able to help the Nigerian youth to actualize, the first thing we have to do is to, is to make sure that the government in power identifies the Nigerian youth as the future of this country. Until the government deliberately identifies the Nigerian youth as the future, no policies will be made to that effect. And even when policies are made, they will not be made with a sense of purpose. This is important because every country that seeks to plan for its future needs to have a long-term vision for which the youth of Nigeria or the youth of that country will be the driving force because there is creativity and there's energy. This means that as Nigerians, if we want to engage the government in terms of policy, the first thing we have to do is to say, what is your broad plan for Nigeria? And this is where it is key for us as youth 
we can we can participate in politics for those who are interested in participating in politics, but there is also a certain level of accountability that we as Nigerian youth can hold the government to by asking the right questions. This then becomes not a discussion of what policy is there. It becomes a discussion of what is the vision for which these policies will fit into. And it is that national vision and the future of that vision, which we are the custodians of, that will inform what exact policies need to be made. There are certain things that have been done by the government at this point. The, the ease of doing business is something that the government is paying attention to. And in fact, the, the recent amendments um, to the Corporate and Allied Matters Act um, just a couple of days ago is something that, that can help the Nigerian youth in a way because it means that certain roadblocks um, to economic prosperity have been taken off, which is a good step, but it has to be situated within a larger national vision for the country and then the youth will become the driving change for it, both in terms of political participation, as well as followership and accountability to ask the right questions. When we do that, then we will be able to articulate policies, but we need to first get the foundation right. And I think that that's the critical point that we need to be paying attention to today. Mm. Thank you. Thanks for that, for, for those thoughts, uh, Iaketo. But Shude, you just mentioned earlier that the youth should not wait to be fed. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you remember this statement uh, as used in context by uh, President Muhammadu Buhari, the line, lazy Nigerian youth. So do you see young people as uh, being lazy and entitled? Or do you see them as deprived? No. No, I mean, that uh, statement continues to elaborate even that to this day because um, it, was a, it was a most unfortunate uh, uh, statement um, that was made by, unfortunately, the president of uh, the country. Everybody can attest to the creativity and the ingenuity, you know, the dexterity of the Nigerian youth in uh, whatever he does. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, um, it, 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 there's always the tendency for people to look at uh, the negatives. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, what the youth, Nigerian youth, sometimes engages itself in, even within this uh, our country and beyond. But where you do that, to be unfair, you do not consider the massive output of uh, the Nigerian youth, uh, you know, beyond the shores of this country. How the average Nigerian has continued to show uh, disabilities uh, in service of other countries, most unfortunately, and because of the economic downturn in this country, they had to leave. You know, so they, they've been amazing in so many ways, you know, and that was why that statement by the president was uh, they met with a lot of uh, flat. The Nigerian youth is very hardworking, there's no doubt. But just like my colleague over there, Etta, said, you know, you, you must also create that environment under which it is going to thrive. Because the youth of other, in the other countries, they, you know, themselves do not just uh, uh, wake up one day and say, look, this is what we're going to do. They grew into the system a system that had already been prepared for them, a system that was already built, you know, to accommodate, uh, you know, a, a, a future that only the youth was going to make brighter. Just like Etta said, you know, it must be a deliberate policy. There must be a definite recognition of the role of uh, the youth. And, but again, if you go by the speeches of uh, government, uh, uh, you know, uh, officials over the years in this country, even including the, I mean, including the present dispensation, uh, in some of the World uh, Youth uh, Day events that have been uh, in, undertaken in the country, uh, you realize the president also doing a double take on what he said the last time and now recognizing the importance of the Nigerian youth. But as they say, words are cheap. Uh, you know, it is in the execution of this word that you realize the seriousness of uh, the people who make statements. So uh, we have been you know, long in promises but very short in action. And that, is, that has been the pain of uh, the when it comes to the issue of youth participation but like we have all you know we have agreed on this uh, discussion that we must take it we must be able to seize the bull by the horn we must be able to now take it to the next level let us not let us not allow the political class uh you know who are far removed from the hopes and aspiration of uh, the nigerian youth let us not allow them to continue to determine you know where the ball is going to swing let that be our own undertaking. Let us build the kind of future that we want on our own terms, not on the terms of like, the much older generation who have pretty much wasted, uh, you know, the opportunities they had had. They have had to make you know, our country a better place. Thank you, Trude. Would that be your final thoughts before we wrap it up today? 
Sorry? Would, I, would those be your final thoughts? Hello. Chide, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, let us wish, let us wish, let us wish the youths, let us wish uh, the youths, you know, a wonderful, uh, you know, period of celebration. Let us wish them a period of, uh, you know, a second, second section where, you know, where, where they are expected to actually sit down, a period of reflection, you know, and uh, think about uh, their place in society today and also mm -hmm. acknowledge the fact. And I must say this uh, critically, the youth of our own time, I mean, when we're in universities and all that, we, we, we realize that um, if we go back, you know, to our time, we, were, we had a bunch of youths that were very, very uh, articulate, you know, that uh, but most importantly understood the dynamics, the, you know, uh, geopolitical dynamics that they found themselves in and the need for, you know, the right action at the right time. The youths of our time were able to make a distinction, a connection between what happened then in our in, the, in our presence then and what was going to happen in the future and that was why we always responded always intervened to anything that happened within the body quality of this country that we felt i'm afraid we we'll be pressed for time today i'm, I'm afraid that, today that if you can hear me have that, and we hope that they'll be able to see that understanding thank you Thank you, Chude. And uh, just uh, just 30 seconds, Yaketok, just uh, wrap up your thoughts for, uh, for us and on what you think about the Nigerian youth and your future in the country. All right. Well, so my final thoughts are this, that the Nigerian youth is in a critical position right now. It is a position where beyond any other thing, the youth himself or herself must know what they want for themselves as a, par as a partner in building Nigeria. We must begin to hold people accountable, both in terms of political participation, like I said before, which is actually vying for office if we have the opportunities to do that, but also in terms of holding the leadership accountable. And that means being able to ask the right questions and being able to see how those questions fit into the larger picture for which we will be the drivers of. Change is coming to Nigeria, positive change is coming, but only if we're ready and only if we stand as the guards to make sure that what we want and what we want for Nigeria is what we see. Key takeaways there from uh, social commentator Achike Chude and of course Inyaketuk, thank you so much for your time joining us on The Breakfast on PLUS TV. Thank you.